We're loving and hating and making scenes. Now we just see everything we believe. We just Hello, what's going on YouTube fam? This is your boy Jay Money here, and I'm bringing you guys a deck discussion. This is going to be my very first deck discussion. I don't think I've done anything like this, so at the end of the video, if you guys really enjoyed this deck discussion, feel free to let me know some feedback so I know to do more of these in the future. So, um, the uh, new side set, Infinity Chasers, just dropped about a few days ago. And a lot of people have a lot of different thoughts about it. You know, some are excited for, you know, just just some to play some of her fun, you know? Um, we got uh, three new archetypes. We got the Evil Eye archetype, which is the archetype that people are leaning most heavily towards in terms of some sort of competitive viability. Uh, because, you know, Evil Eye of Selene is a pretty fantastic equip spell. And all the other cards kind of centralize around that card to give them bonus effects. So if you could keep a lean on the board, it's pretty, you know, pretty strong. Um, the next one would be the Witchcraft Monster or Archetype, which is also actually getting support in the um, set after Dark Neo Storm, which is something worth noting. So uh, that might actually be something you might want to keep your eye on in the future. And then there's the last set, which is the most in my opinion, the most overlooked and the most underrated deck in this entire set, the Infinity Tracks. This is actually the archetype that I was the most excited about and still am to an extent. Now, why do people, you know, why do people dismiss the Infinity Track archetype? And, you know, why is this? Well, before we uh, get into the explanations, let's go ahead and look at all the cards. The Infinite Trek archetype is essentially um, a mix of Earth Machine monsters that centralize around XC summoning and all that jazz. They're mostly comprised of level 5 machine monsters that are Earth, but there are a couple that are level 4 lower because you do have to have some sort of normal summon in most decks you play. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, the uh, main two which are your normal summons, uh, Infinity Track Harvester and Infinity Track uh, Drill Anchor. Now, Harvester and Drill Anchor both can get their effects on normal summon or special summon. Harvester allows you to add a um, Infinity Track monster from deck to hand, and Anchor Drill lets you special summon an Infinity Track from your hand, and they both have the effect to where you can target any other machine on the field, and both that target and, you know, either the Harvester or the Drill, depending on which one you're using, uh, both of their levels become combined, you know, equal to the combined total. So that's something worth noting. So you don't need to target in uh, Infinity Track Monster, but there is another monster in this deck that heavily synergizes with this deck. But let's go ahead and move on to the level fives. Um, we have a few level fives. We have Infinity Track Trencher, Tunneler, Crab Crane and Drag Shovel. Now, all of the level 5 um, Infinity Tracks allow you to summon themselves from the hand by tributing an Earth Machine. That's very, very important. So you have to have Earth Machines to summon these from your hand, and you have to tribute uh, Earth Machines to summon them in defense position. That's, you know, that's uh, that part is a little lackluster. Um, you know, the fact that you have to tribute a monster just to summon these means you're going inherently minus one in card economy. So at the very least, you know, you'd figure you could put these in attack position to, you know, try and close out a game if you have the option to. But that's besides the point. Um, Trencher, uh, they all have grave-centered effects outside of um, uh, Drag Shovel. So Trencher, while it's in the grave, you can banish it and target any infinity track in the grave and special summon it its effects are not negated so that's something definitely worth noting that i'll get into later uh tunneler lets you banish it from the grave in pot of avarice essentially five earth machines from your graveyard into the deck and then draw two that draw two comes in a lot um crab crane lets you banish it from the grave to add an out trigger extension from deck to hand and Crab Crane, while it's on the field, you can banish a machine from your graveyard and add a spin turn from deck to hand. So at least that one doesn't re require it to be in the graveyard. You can get a little bit of card advantage and kind of keep it on board for an XC summon. So that's pretty good. So 
Speaking of those search targets, what are they? Well, let's take a look at Out Trigger Extension. Out Trigger Extension is actually really good for the deck because, again, the deck is Exceed uh, centric and Exceed focused. And, you know, the very first sentence is your machine type Exceed monsters can't be targeted by card effects. You know, that comes up a lot, especially since a lot of decks target. And uh, once per turn, you can target any um, infinite track monster and special summon a machine exceeds on top of it that is two ranks higher but for the rest of the turn you cannot uh exceed summon or you can't special summon monsters period except earth machine monsters and so as you can see there is a lot of level five so you can already assume that there's going to be a rank five in this deck which means you, on average you could rank up into a rank seven machine which Draco Sack is the most popular one at the moment, considering that it is a machine that produces also machine tokens. Um, it itself can't be destroyed by battle by card effects as long as there's tokens on the board. However, the tokens are wind, so you can't summon those tokens. So Draco Sack might not even be something that you would even be interested in going into in this deck, considering you know that it did actually get a reprint in this set. Um, and that's kind of sad to think about, but. Let's look at Spin Turn now. Spin Turn lets you um, essentially uh, target a machine XCs, and depending on what position it's in, depending you know depends on what it destroys. If the machine XCs is in attack position, you can switch it to defense and pop a monster. If it's in defense, you can switch it to attack position and pop a spell or trap, which that effect is probably the most common, you know, and you'll see why when we take a look at the extra deck. Now. The extra deck consists of two Link Monsters and three Xyz Monsters. We're going to look at the first Xyz Monster, uh, the River Stormer. Infinity Track River Stormer um, does one of two things. Actually, all the Xyz do um, one of the same things, but they have a different first effect. River Stormer, you can detach material to either add an, any Earth Machine from deck to hand or foolish an Earth Machine from deck to grave. Mountain Smasher just detaches and boosts its attack by a thousand. And Earth Slicer, the rank nine, is you know honestly pretty strong for controlling the board. You can detach as many materials under it, target that many cards, and just destroy them. And that that's pretty decent. So um you can see how you can easily go into these cards, you know, looking at the first two cards, Harvester and Drill Anchor. And their level modulation of capabilities it's very very easy to go into these now we do have to look at the links um there's two of them there's fortress megaclops and goliath the link one now fortress megaclops is probably not going to see any play because it's you know condition to summon is incredibly you know it's incredibly steep you need exactly three xyz monsters to make this thing and its effects are pretty good but the cost of three XCs, you're much better off just, you know, keeping your XCs on board and just keeping, you know, just keeping the board presence, if you will. But I do want to note that it does pay you back a little bit by monster reboarding an XC from your grave and targeting a monster your opponent controls, special summoning that XCs and just absorbing that other monster you targeted as a material. So that is something worth noting. But... Um, Infinity Track Goliath is the one that you're probably going to play two to three copies of, and there's a couple reasons for this. One, uh, it takes any Infinity Track that's not a Link Monster, so it uh, it essentially just uh, enables you to you know summon more Infinity Tracks other ways. Um, and when the card is sent to the graveyard, you can target any machine that sees on the field and just attach it from the grave as a material now how is this important well let's go back to the all the xc's for the infinity tracks all of their second effects enable you to tribute a machine link monster and summon them out of the graveyard in defense position so with that being said you can it does enable you to essentially summon multiple xc's on the board without you know, committing multiple monsters into Link 2s, Link 3s, and things like that. So, while Goliath is also a material, the monster that is um, 
you know, that it's under can't be destroyed by card effects. And why is that important? Well, if we go back to the out trigger extension, I did say that Machine XEs also can't be targeted. So if you have a massive Machine XE like Earth Slicer that can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects, now you're looking at a pretty difficult monster to deal with. All right, so we went ahead and looked at all of these monsters. Now, they don't really do anything all that special. In fact, the level fives are what you want to go for, but the problem with these level fives is that they all require you to tribute Earth Machines to summon them, so you are taking minus ones. So it's no wonder why this deck is severely overlooked and underrated. So why why do I have such high hopes for this deck? Well, um, out of all of the different archetypes in this uh, set of Infinity Chasers, Infinity Tracks have the most indirect support um, out of all the archetypes, simply for the fact that they're machine-based archetype and they're Earth Machines, which have a whole different set of support of their own. And I'll go into all of that in just a second, but there is one thing that I do want to mention, and that is the fact that this deck really, really complements the Rank 10s. Both it and the Rank 10 train archetype, they both complement each other very heavily, and they both cover each other's weaknesses. Now, what do I mean by this? So, the Rank 10 Machines, as we all know, is an incredibly good OTK-based strategy, but it has a very subpar time going first. Infinity Tracks, by design, is meant to, you know, control the game state and control the board, so it has pretty good going first capabilities, but it has subpar going second capabilities. So if you find a way to combine these two together, well, you got a very, very good, you know, got a very good thing going for you. And I've, you know, messed with this quite a bit, you know, for the past few days, and I'm really, really liking it. So, um, let's go and mention a few things just right off the bat. First off, can I just say that Mocking of Fortress really is really, really strong in this deck. I'm not even kidding. Mocking of Fortress in this deck is absolutely fantastic. Um, it actually makes going into your rank 9s much, much easier. So, there's that. And because Infinity Tracks covers the weakness of the rank 10 trains to where you can go into rank 5s, 7s, or 9s. Not only that, but they are machines at the end of the day. So you can go into things like Cyber Dragon Infinity and, you know, other rank 9s like True King of All Calamities. Keep in mind, you're not restricted into just summoning Machine XCs, so, you know, there are times where you can easily put up both Infinity and Calamities on the board turn 1, and that's pretty solid even in this game state, uh, because Calamities against a deck like Salomon Great can outright just win you the game sometimes, and uh, with a card like Infinity to protect your Calamities, you know, that can just spell game over. But, anyway, um, how does these how does this archetype work with the rank 10s in specific well um there's about three key no four key cards that really really synergize with the infinity tracks themselves first is the field spell um being the um i keep forgetting what the field spell is called but the one that lets you discard a card and add a level 10 or if a level 10 is normal or special you can special summon a, any earth machine that's level 4 or lower from the deck. Its effects are negated though, and its level does go to 10, but you know, things like that can be important for the fact that you can summon out your harvester and if you have a way to get to your trencher later on, you can re monster reborn the harvester and get you a search. Um, now, the two level 10s you would end up using in this deck normally is your Dara Crane and your Speedy um, Express Bullet Train. Those two in general are the ones that you're going to use the most. Uh, again, you know, you can go into Gustav, you know, with these cards and then go into your um, Lieb, which is also accessible through your um, your Earth Slicer, surprisingly, with Out Trigger Extension because Earth Slicer is a rank 9 and Lieb is a rank 11. And, you know, Lieb is an Earth Machine. So that's something worth noting there. Um... And then the last one is the newly introduced level 4 of the um, 
the rank 10 train support, which is the, uh, I forget what it is. It's the Pegasus, the flying stampede Pegasus guy. You know, when it is normal or special summon, you know, you get to target any earth machine in your grave. It doesn't even have to be level 10 and you do special summon it and you can target it or you can target the monster and you can make it either level 4 or you can make both levels um, equal to the marks you targeted. That's pretty important. Again, this is on normal or special summon. Same thing with um, Crab Crane, which they're both level 4 earth machines and, you know, the main ones are level 5, which means that you know, these two synergizes very heavily with a card like Downbeat. Downbeat essentially enables you to access either your Drill or your Pegasus very, very easily. And they can both get their effects considering you can trigger them on Special Summon. Now, I do want to mention, I want to continue to mention that this is an Earth Machine archetype. Not only that, but A, you got cards like there's so many different cards the reason why this deck is so underrated is because it has so much synergy with so many different cards look at this archetype you have a lot of different monsters that are under 500 attack that are machine you have a lot of earth machines you know a lot of them have either 500 attack or 500 defense or 2100 attack or 2100 defense um I've, I'm pretty sure you guys know where I'm going with this. Like, there were, there's so many cards that can easily be played in this deck to kind of compensate for the weaknesses. It's not even funny. Again, Downbeat was one of them, but you also have cards like Urgent Schedule. Again, Earth Machines, you know, there's level 2 and belows, or level 4 and lowers, and there's level 5 and highers in this deck. You can easily Urgent Schedule 2 monsters out. Machine Duplication. That is a huge one. Harvester and Trencher both are under 500 attack on this one. Um, if you can find a way to access any of those and you resolve a Machine Duke, you probably just won that game. Um, there's also another card in here. As I said, Cyber Dragon Naster. Cyber Dragon Naster, we're also getting out of dual power, so that's coming out in about a week and a half. Cyber Dragon Naster is also incredible for this deck, considering that... It is like a Galaxy Soldier in terms of its summon condition. You just discard a monster to summon it. But if it is special summon, you can target any machine monster in your grave that is either 2100 attack or 2100 defense. And you just special summon it to the field. Its effects aren't negated either. And as you can see, Trencher has 2100 defense. Um, Harvester has 2100 defense. A uh, tunneler is not really there, but crab crane has 2100 attack drag shovel has 2100 defense So you can summon literally anything uh, From your graveyard outside of tunneler. That's huge And you can get this on normal or special summon next um, th There's another package in there's two packages that heavily synergize with this deck one being Surprisingly, the Ancient Gear Package. The Ancient Gear Package is pretty, pretty special in this deck. Um, most notably, the card that you're probably going to be using is Ancient Gearbox. Ancient Gearbox is essentially an extra search. Remember, you can search any Earth Machine with Rid River Stormer. So if this card is added from deck or graveyard to your hand, you can reveal it. And you can add any Earth Machine with 500 attack or 500 defense straight from the deck and what fits that category well trencher has 500 attack tunneler has 500 defense crab crane has 500 defense and yeah you're looking at something pretty good there anyway um but if you want to extend that if you want to make that a little bit more consistent to where you don't have to search it with um your uh river stormer you can play a card like let's say um, Ancient Gear Catapult, to where if you're done resolving your train field spell, if you control no cards, you can just blow it up and you can special summon an Ancient Gear Wyvern from your deck and then search the gearbox, which searches you another card. Um, the Ancient Gearbox itself could just be instant fodder for your Machina Fortress. That's really cool. And then if you have any access to Harvester, Harvester and Machina Fortress by itself is instant calamities. 
really really huge um the ancient gear package is something special like you don't have to play three catapults and a wyvern for a gearbox you could just play gearbox and just search it with river stormer but if you have the space that's something you can do next we have a sky striker package the sky striker package is surprisingly good in this deck not just because you know kagari is you know in shizuka and all of them are machines but you know again you kind of want to go second in this deck because it synergizes so well with the rank tens but the thing about the sky striker package is not only can you put machines on board without normal summoning but at the same time it baits out interruptions you know you can grab your jamming ways you can grab your widow anchors do all kinds of things but the reason why this synergizes so well with infinity tracks is the newly introduced sky striker kinda i believe that's what it's called the earth one because that's an earth machine it synergizes so well it can trigger your dare crane for a summon it can you know enable you to summon your bullet liner um, you can summon your infinity tracks with it. It also has a down arrow. Like, really, really good. So, just mentioning all of these different things, there's still going to be some people just asking, hey, you know, that still doesn't solve the inherent problem that these level 5 um, infinity tracks are all minus 1s because they all require you to tribute, you know, an earth machine to just put them on the board. Well... There is one other card that kind of just alleviates that weakness altogether, and that is Cosmic Compass. I also played it in Rank 10s. This card is absolutely phenomenal. Going second, it completely alleviates that issue. It just gives you the free materials and the free bodies necessary to essentially just compensate for that weakness so you don't have to tribute off your Harvesters, so you don't have to tribute off your Machina Fortresses. That's really, really huge. And even if... You don't need the tokens uh, for anything to drop out of your hand because all your level fives are on the board. You can easily use those extra tokens and the compass itself to step up into something like, you know, Platinum Gadget. Something we're also getting in dual power alongside Cyber Dragon Naster. You know, um, because Cosmic Compass is a normal summon, along with something that you would want to normal like let's say your drill anchor or your harvester then you could use that set platinum gadget to compensate for that and just summon out you know those cards you can summon out your harvester drill or your your yeah your harvester your drill or even your cyber dragon master because it summons any level four lore machine from your hand and since all of those monsters get their effects when they can be special summoned as well you're going to go ahead and do just that you know, not only that, but you can also use the tokens if you don't even need to go into something like Platinum Gadget. You can use those tokens and go into, like, let's say, a Cleefort Genius and then further use the Genius and anything else you have on the board. Like, let's say, your Compass to just step up into something like Summon Sorceress and just complete any kind of combo you want. Because if, you, let's say, you had access your Dare Crane off your Field Spell and you dropped it, after you summon, let's say, your compass, you can use your summon sorceress and target the dairy crane and summon your bullet train and make a Gustav and make leap from there and then just kind of just win the game from there. Or, you know, you can, let's say you had like a mock in a fortress and you discarded, let's say, your harvester. Or let's say you actually resolved your urgent schedule and you summoned your, let's say, your mock in a fortress and your harvester whatnot and you get your compass and then you use harvester or whatnot and you step up into something like summon sorceress well you can sit there and if you have accessed your trencher at some point or if you've like let's say discarded trencher for mocking a fortress or if you sacked off a token for trencher and then use the trencher to link into summon sorceress you can banish the trencher and just summon your harvester get a a search off of it because you know you haven't searched yet then you summon sorcerers to summon let's say mocking a fortress straight from the deck and you have your true king of all calamities play right there if you're going first or if you have a level five on the board that you can summon sork in you can make cyber dragon infinity from there it's there's literally no limit to what cause uh, a card like cosmic compass can just 
enable you to do in a deck like this. But again, this is a card for going second because it is literally a Phantom Sky Blaster in reverse to where you summon tokens up to the number of monsters your opponent controls. Now, generally, you're going to bait out most interruptions before Cosmic Compass even hits the board, so that's something you wouldn't need to worry about. Now, you know, saying all this, you know, when your opponent does see something like an urgent schedule, or if they do see something like, let's say, a Cosmic Compass, they can kind of deduce that you're probably playing a deck that wants to go second, and so they might make you go first, and cards like those can be extremely dead. Well, you know, even in a deck like this, because remember, this is Infinity Tracks, so Infinity Tracks also has a good going first game, as long as a good graveyard resource game. You can sit there and just, let's say, if I am anticipating my opponent making me go first, I can just easily side out those compasses and side out those urgent schedules and side into something like Iron Draw to where I have a Platinum Gadget on the board with the Cyber Dragon Infinity and I can play Iron Draw and just draw me into more side cards like, let's say, Barrage Blast, you know, which is also even more interruptions, you know, that you can, you know, put on the board against your opponent. So, you know, sometimes that Cyber Dragon Infinity and that Calamities isn't enough. Sometimes your opponent can still kind of put something on the board. And thanks to Infinity summoning on top of Nova, you'll have more materials than normal to detach from not and still have a negate left over. You can at least blow up two cards and still have a negate uh, with Infinity and probably absorb another card next turn. So, you know, Barrage Blast is a great side deck card for, for a deck like that for when you know you're about to go first and you just play some Iron Draws to, you know, further help you draw into it. You know, not to mention... You know, before you overlay into Infinity, you may have um, went for your Drag Shovel to get a spin turn to, you know, disrupt even more plays. You know, that's just things to think about. So, all in all, guys, this deck is heavily overlooked and heavily underrated. And I think people just, you know, greatly underestimate just how many indirect support cards a deck like this really has. Again, I mentioned so many different things in one video actually made this video a lot longer than what I anticipated. You know, again, like Machina Fortress, the rank 10 uh, train support, they easily synergize with this stuff. You know, Downbeat, Urgent Schedule, Machine Dupe, Cyber Dragon Naster, the Ancient Gear Package, or at the very least, Ancient Gear Box, you know, the Sky Striker Package, you know, Kaina, it's an Earth Machine. You know, it synergizes with the rest of that stuff. You know, Cosmic Compass for pumping out earth machine tokens to just fuel your level five targets or just step up into something like a platinum gadget or you know just step up into summon sorcerers with Cleefort genius after negating a card you know just it's so many good things going for this deck again this deck is so heavily underrated i i, I don't know what to say you know it's just like how but then again i've played a lot of machine decks in the past so looking at a deck like this i know um the deck has a lot more going for it than people give it credit for you know and yeah it sucks we, we're getting platinum gadget and we're getting nastro which means this deck's only going to get better and i know platinum gadget can't be used as link material but because it's a machine based link monster you can tribute it off for one of your infinity track xc's monsters in the graveyard once you're finished with it and just clear up some space that's also something to note so let me know what you guys think about this deck discussion in general what did you guys think about it again this is bitty pretty lengthy this is more of an in-depth discussion rather than just you know let's you know take a look just a deck look down or something like that but yeah this is a first look at this deck with an in-depth discussion i want to hear you guys' thoughts on this so guys that's it for me Thank you guys very much for watching. This is Jay Money, and I am. Yeah.